Hey everyone, this is Chris, the co-founder and head of services at Uptown Creation, a B2B marketing company that uses LinkedIn to generate leads without taking any shortcuts using bots and automation, but rather doing everything by hand the way that it was meant to be done. So in this video, I'll be showing you the exact process that we use to generate hundreds of leads using the LinkedIn sales navigator for our clients every single month. And you'll be able to duplicate this with about 30 minutes a day and just a consistent work ethic to get things done. So as a prerequisite, you'll need the LinkedIn sales navigator. LinkedIn will offer you a 30 day free trial. I'll also include a 60 day free trial link in the description of this video, but let's jump into it. So once you have LinkedIn sales navigator, in essence, what we'll be doing is using the search tool to identify criteria for what your leads and prospects look like, and then using the lists functionality to keep track of them as we move them through our sales and lead generation process. So this is something that if you're using bots and automation, you won't have access to, and you, use, you lose a lot of trackability, not to mention LinkedIn will raise a lot of red flags on your account by using bots and automation that just make it so your account isn't as effective long-term and you kind of ruin that asset that you're building for yourself. So the first thing that we'll go through right now is the setup to make sure that you have all the systems in place that we utilize to keep track of these leads as they flow through the process. So what you wanna do is go to lists and then create three different lists. So the first list you'll create is titled connection request sent. These might not make a lot of sense right now, but as we go through things, they will make more and more sense. The second list you'll want to create is message sent. And then the third list you'll want to create is follow up. So you're able to keep track of those leads that might not be good right now, but you want to reach back out to in the future. So once you have those three lists set up, we'll be able to go to saved searches and all filters to really start using the power of LinkedIn Sales Navigator. So I'm just going to create a search for pharmacists. I'm a pharmacist and that's a lot of the people that I'm connecting with on LinkedIn. But this is going to be where you'll have to look at some of my other videos and the other resources out there to use the LinkedIn Sales Navigator to the best of its ability. But at a high level, what you'll wanna do I'm using the geography as the United States because that's where I'm based. And then I'm searching for second and third degree connections just because I don't want to weed in those first degree connections that I'm already connected with. And then under past lead and account activity, you'll want to remove saved leads from search and remove contacted leads from search. And this will make sure that you're not duplicating any of the work that you've already done. Then for this search and this example, I'll be adding just the title of pharmacist and then going based off of this search. A really important caveat here and something that makes what we do a lot better than what a lot of people and a lot of strategies out there are is by targeting the people that have posted in the last 30 days. So this will ensure that all of the work that you're doing isn't falling on deaf ears. This will make it so you're only reaching out to people that are actually on the platform and not somebody that made an account three years ago and hasn't been on since then. So once you have the lead list created and you're targeting the people that have posted in the last 30 days, you'll want to save this search as connection request set. And this will be the list that you primarily work off of when you sit down to work every single day on your LinkedIn account. And basically what you'll be doing is going down the list and saving these people to that list that you just created, connection request sent. And then you'll go down the list and start sending connection requests to these people. You'll notice that when you click connection request, you're able to include a personalized message. And it's unfortunate that mainly bots and automation are the ones that use this feature. So what we utilize and what we encourage you to utilize is to not send anything in this message, just because people are kind of predispositioned to think 
that if they're receiving a message and it's generic in that initial outreach, that they know they're going to get pitched and they're going to be less likely to accept that connection request. So when you sit down to work every day, you'll save people to that lead list, connection request sent, and then go down the list to send out connection requests. There's 25 people on each page. So what you'll want to do is do this for two pages worth of people to end up sending out 50 connection requests a day. That's really the safe number that we've found through all of our testing. And that becomes the bottleneck in your lead generation efforts. So if you do nothing else, on a consistent basis, make sure that you are consistent with sending out connection requests every single day. What we'll do next is we're going to create the second saved search that will allow us to send messages to those people once they connect with us. So what we'll want to do here is add in one of these custom lists now. So the list that we made connection requests sent this will be a list that we want to add here and then target the people that are first degree connections. We'll also want to add in to remove contacted leads. You'll need to include the saved leads since they're saved to a list and that's how we're searching for these people. So this will be the list or the saved search rather that you'll be saving and that you'll be working off of every single day to send out messages to those new leads and prospects. So you can see that the person that I already sent a connection request pretty much accepted it immediately and is already in this list of people. So what you'll want to name this list is send messages. I always make the alert frequency to be never. So now, what we've created is we've made three lists that are connection request sent, message sent, and follow up. And then we've made the saved searches that are associated with that connection request sent and send messages. So what you'll want to do, as I mentioned, when you sit down is send out connection requests on a consistent basis every single day. Then what will happen is the people that you've connected with will go into this send messages saved search. And what you'll do from here is send out a genuine and authentic message for whatever goal you're trying to create. So whether you're trying to recruit for your podcast or whether you're trying to recruit for your coaching business or for your SaaS company, you'll wanna tailor this message to be around that function. And I've made another video about what the perfect message entails and how to avoid some really bad practices. But just as a general rule of thumb, you want to avoid what I call the dirty words. And the dirty words being saying phrases like, thanks for connecting. I'd love to add you to my network. Thanks for networking here on LinkedIn. And that is going to be a thing that a lot of bots and automation use again. Um, which people are predispositioned to kind of ignore. The second bad practice that I would recommend you avoid is what I call the value vomit. So there's a lot of teachers out there on LinkedIn that'll tell you to send PDFs and send value first before asking anything from anyone. What this misses is that you're assuming that somebody has a problem that they might not have. What you want to do in your initial outreach is just act like a human and act like a person that's just trying to get to know somebody. At the end of the day, people buy from people. And if you're able to implement the principles of social selling and start real genuine conversations with these people, that's what's inevitably going to make it so you have success on LinkedIn long-term. A lot of the methods that people that use bots and automation teach will generate you know, those short-term dopamine hits, but you're not really creating long-term relationships that feel good and feel right. So I'd recommend that you look into some of the content I've created about what the perfect message is and go from there. Once you send a message to somebody, you'll want to save them to this message sent list. And this'll make it so they don't show up in this list anymore. And that is the basic principles at a very high level of how to have an effective LinkedIn strategy. Now, the two variables that you want to keep an eye on 
are the targeting that you're sending connection requests to, as well as that messaging. Those become the two biggest variables outside of the way that your profile looks that will have an effect on your outreach strategy. If you're getting a really low acceptance rate, then that might mean that you need to switch up the targeting. If you're getting a really low response rate from the messages that you're sending, that might mean that you have to take a different approach with the messaging that you're sending. The beautiful thing about keeping track of everything in lists is you'll be able to track all of those numbers and all of the efforts that you're putting into LinkedIn without having to do any workarounds or anything. So by doing this all by hand, you're creating this asset that is going to be useful for a long time and also allows you a lot of trackability that bots and automation will not offer you, unfortunately. That is the basic principles of the LinkedIn outreach strategy that we use. And then a lot of it becomes refining and then working off of the data that we already have to refine and make the process even better. If you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, I'd be happy to provide any recommendations and help that I can. My name is Chris Casalino, and I'm the co-founder of Uptown Creation. You can also follow Uptown Creation on LinkedIn or leave a comment on this video on YouTube.